I'm Adam. And I'm Joe. And this is Adam and Joe Go Tokyo. We're coming to you from the most exciting, futuristic, and let's face it, confusing city on the planet, Tokyo. A city where you can walk into a totally normal shop and buy a t-shirt that says this. George! Clapton? We'll be doing our best to prove to you that there's more to Japanese life than demented cartoons, talking toilets, and vending machines stuffed with schoolgirls' knickers, as wonderful as those things are. Coming up on tonight's show, we'll be checking out the Japanese fancy dress phenomenon of cosplay. There'll be live comedy and music here in the studio, and we'll be meeting a man who's been called one of the most famous inventors in the history of the entire world. But first, it's time for our roundup of the stories that have caught our eye here in Tokyo this week in our Go Tokyo update. Go Tokyo update. Go Tokyo update. <laughs> Joe, what have you got for us? The first story involves one of your favourite famous people in Britain, Adam. David Beckham. I love him. You love Posh and Bex? Yes. Well, if you thought you were going to escape from them uh, by being here in Tokyo, you can't. Because Beckham has endorsed no fewer than seven products in Japan. And his latest uh, campaign uh, revolves around chocolate-covered almonds. Since Beckham sponsored these nuts, they have sold double the amount. Really? He's a huge uh, star in Japan. We had to scour Tokyo to find these because they're so hard to come by. Why? Because they're all sold out? Yeah. Wow. Everybody wants uh, a nibble on Beckham's nuts. Will you put one of David Beckham's nuts in my mouth? And they come in little individual nut, uh, nut bags. You were going to say nut sacks. I was going to say nut sacks, yeah. But then I pulled back. There we go. Have a go on that. And while Adam tries one of them, here's a slightly low quality VHS copy of his chocolate covered nuts. His nut bird. Open. Meiji, almond and macadamia. Beckham t shirts are tarred. Well, you've uh, very effectively uh, adopted David Beckham's nut pose there, Adam. Thanks very much. Can you do his cheeky little smile once after he nibbles the nuts? No, you can't. No. Can no. So there we go, David Beckham's nuts. And they won't be uh, available for you to buy in Britain ever. OK, are you ready for some pop? Jack? Yes. OK, now I know you're a Jamiroquai fan. Yeah, I don't really want to admit that on television. Well, but... it's too late for that now. Because if you do like Jamiroquai, you're going to love this guy. He's a Japanese pop sensation, and he's called Jam's Village. Jam's Village with a, with a Z in there. Let's have a look and check out Jam's Village's moves. <laughs> What do you reckon? Uh, he looks like somebody who would have been very badly bullied at school, who's maybe seen a, a Jamiroquai video and liked it and, and copied it. Well, you were quite badly bullied at school. Is that the way you dance? Yeah. I'm not as good as that, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Weirdly, it says here they've been accused of being a second-rate Jamiroquai rip-off. I'd say they're a first-rate Jamiroquai rip-off. <laughs> Everybody knows that it's easy to get famous in Japan. This is because Japanese people are so enthusiastic that they'll embrace anybody, even the most washed-up Western star. So that got me and Joe thinking. Perhaps we could finally find the fame that so far eluded us somewhat in the UK. So we've given ourselves eight weeks to see if we can become really big in Japan. As the first step in our quest for fame, we decided to test exactly how celebrity mad the Japanese public are. If Adam and I, a couple of nobodies, turned up in a public place, accompanied by a camera crew and ten screaming girls, would they assume we were famous and mob us? Let's see what happened. Hi and welcome to Celebrity Walkabout. I'm Meet Aiden, our fake showbiz reporter searching for celebs in central Tokyo. Well, tonight's his lucky night because we've just pulled up in our limo for an impromptu public schmooze. Aiden's excited, but will anyone else really care? Can we grab a few words with you guys? Is that okay? Hello, Aiden. How are you doing, mate? Well, one guy's trying to figure out who we are, so that's a start. Which is Tokyo? Oh, well, we love Tokyo, we love the Japanese, the fans are so enthusiastic. The Japanese are just physically less threatening than the fans in the UK, so that's nice. 
But despite our shades and our celebrity charisma, the crowds are so far failing to materialize. It's time to send in the screaming girls. Tokyo! Our 10 fake fans have done the trick, and curious onlookers are beginning to wonder if they can smell celebrity. Better get a handshake just in case. And now, yes, it's a crowd. People are taking pictures of us with their mobile phones. But who do they think we are? It doesn't seem to matter. So you guys are both taking drugs now? Drugs are for losers, eh? Uh, that's something we've often said and uh, we still say. From a group of 10 girls, the crowd has now grown to around 100. If this was London, there might be a couple of people hurling abuse around now, but here in Tokyo, it's as if Britney and Christina were giving away free knickers. And do you want to know something? It feels right. Have you started any new works? Uh, we are working on an album on the back back and a range of clothing and a book. Also, what's it? That's the secret of celebrity, always knowing when to leave the party. The experiment has been a total success. Just look again at how that crowd formed in only a few minutes. Here in Japan, it doesn't take much for a grain of bogus bigness to snowball into fully-blown huge-osity. Hello, Tokyo. We've arrived. <laughs> now, here on Adam and Joe Go Tokyo, we try and make Japanese pop culture as palatable as possible for Western audiences. How fantastic of us. We're wicked. So see what you make of Japan's uh, most famous singing observational comedy duo, Tetsu and Tomo. Very well pronounced. Thanks, Adam. Probably wrong, Lee. なんでだろう。なんでだろう。And now it's time for our top five segment. Every week we'll be picking the top five products uh, in a particular range in Japan. This week, I'm very pleased to say, it's the top five toys. Add Tamagotchis? Yes. Uh, it was kind of big in Britain about, what, five years ago? At least five years ago, yeah. But in Japan, it has advanced at breakneck speed. And to, then, to what, exactly? To this. Is there any way to I'm make them shut up? No. Uh, well, these are called Harrow and Harrow. They're characters from a Japanese cartoon called Gundam Wing. The deal with Tamagotchis is, you talk to them, you prod them, and at first they didn't even flap their ears, uh, but over the day, the more I got angry and talked to them, the more they started doing. And this is just after a day's ownership. Really? They're flapping their ears. Wow, yeah. you must be so proud. I detect a hint of cynicism I don't, I don't understand them, Joe, and, and, and um, how old are you? OK, well, maybe I can change your mind with these uh, Kubrick figures. These are the kind of things that if you were a, a ruthlessly trendy person in London, you would pay about £10 each for. They're based on a famous uh, Japanese manga called Tokyo Tribes. And they're little models of actual uh, street tribes. And 
For me, they're weird because they are not the sort of thing we would have played with when we were kids, you know? You Certainly a, not. You had a little figurine of a policeman, and he wasn't in riot gear, and he didn't have a riot shield. And he well, didn't it was a, a more innocent time. Very true. Uh, now, these are based on um, Japanese businessmen, and there's actually a word for being a useless, washed-up, middle-aged man in Japan, and the word is oyaji. And this is basically what happens when you reach middle age uh, in Japan. Uh, you become overweight, you've got, uh, you lose your hair, and you just spend your time either playing golf or just getting drunk at your office party with your tie around your head, shaking your maracas. The question is, is that a worse or a better way to spend your time than collecting tiny figurines like this? Let's go to number two. And number two is an ambient toy, which doesn't really have its full impact uh, here on its own in the studio. But it's solar powered, uh, it also reacts from electric light, and this is all it does. Does it not tell the time or anything? Nope. It's not like an egg timer? Nope. It doesn't have a radio in it? Nope. It's just an ambient toy. It sits there on your desk, it's head You can't just say it's just an ambient toy. What does that mean? It just means that it's, it's a good thing to, to relax you, to calm you down. I don't understand the world anymore. Okay. We'd better go quickly to our number one toy. The number one toy... I'm picking the top five next week. ...is called Hackathon. OK, you're going to like this. <laughs> I'm not. It's a little uh, square, like, banana monkey man. OK, it's really time we grew up now. I mean, it suddenly dawned on me. I think it's broken. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Basically, when its nose lit up, you tapped a little rhythm... ...and it repeated it exactly. Joe, it's wicked, man. It's wicked. Joe, it's wicked. That is the number one toy in Tokyo, ladies and gentlemen. Joe, wicked. And it's broken. Cool. Joe, cool. So, what do you do if you're a young nerd with no friends and a lot of time on your hands? A little bit like me and Joe. Well, if you're Japanese, then you dress up as your favourite fantasy character and attend conventions with other like-minded loonies. It's a craze that's called cosplay or costume play, and when we heard that there was a big competition going on, we thought we'd have a go. But first, we thought we'd get some tips from a couple of quite attractive experts. I love experts. In Japan, adults dressing up is no dirty little secret. Cosplay is a national obsession, which began with mimicking pop stars, then mushroomed into manga, movies and video games. Now, you're big manga fans. You read a lot of manga, yes? Hi. And you love it so much that you dress up as the characters in it. So, and is it just girls or boys, or is it more girls than boys? Are you saying that if we do cosplay, will we be strange? <laughs> yes. Mina and Koga had worked on their costume for months. We'd only had a day, and we were worried it was really going to show. We were going to do something a bit Harry Potter. <laughs> do your Harry Potter face, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That's good already. Imagine what it's going to be like with the whole costume. The following afternoon, we arrive at the festival, which is already packed with over 5,000 cosplay enthusiasts. In the car park outside, people in costumes are treated like stars as eager fans queue up to take their picture. Feeling more than a little intimidated by how seriously everyone's taking it, we head for the changing rooms. How can I compete with that? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit tense. No, that looks brilliant. I'm done. How are you getting on? Well, I mean, you know, I'm wearing black trousers and a grey sweater. OK, and the final touch... Ding! But successful cosplaying isn't just about your costume. It's also about striking a great pose, just like in a frame of manga. We arrive in the competition area and heads turn. But are they impressed or insulted? After all, Harry Potter never wore a cheap black dressing gown, and Dumbledore doesn't usually have a beard like a goat's ass. Luckily, we find a friend. Hey, there's Hermione! Hello! 
Harry. 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 Harry Potter this. I'm pleased to announce you have both been accepted into Hogwarts School of Witches and Wizardry. Wow, imagine all the things we're going to do in the japes and the frogs and the sweets. Sweet? Can someone close that chamber of secrets? There's a terrible draft. Then the contest begins. To the delight of a mostly male crowd, the competitors each have five minutes to impress the judges. Mercifully, one of the panels dressed as stupidly as us. Why do you um, why do you want to do all this? Do you want to win the competition? Bigot, bigot, big. And what happens if what do you get if you win? Oh. Right. Right. Surely there's easier ways of getting honour. Um, Finally, okay. it's time for us to bring honour on our own small island. <laughs> Amazingly enough, we fail to win. The prize goes to a person of indistinguishable gender dressed as some kind of air hostess. But suddenly, we're summoned back on stage. We're honoured with a special prize for best overseas competitors plastic bag containing two leaflets and so our cosplay adventure ends and we leave only slightly less confused than when we arrived so I still don't understand why do they wear the costumes this beard's cut off the blood supply to my brain you won't be dressing as Dumbledore for the next festival then no I'll be dressing as a sexy air hostess <laughs> <laughs> Please. Our next guest is Japan's most prolific inventor, Dr. Nakamatsu. His career began at the age of five, when he developed a gravity stabilizer for his model aeroplane. At 14, he created the automatic kerosene pump. But his biggest triumph came at the age of 23, when he invented the floppy disk. Since then, he's amassed over 3,000 patents and been named one of the five greatest inventors of all time. Dr. Nakamatsu, thank you very much for How coming How do you do? In. A pleasure to meet you. What is your name? Joe. What is the reason you have a name of Joe, J-O-E? Uh, you tell me, Dr. Nakamas. Yes, I think that you are Japanese-oriented English gentleman, J-O-E. You see, already you're inventing. You've been that, here a couple of seconds. You've yes. invented a fantastic acronym. Yes, I'm inventing your name. You've invented my name. Yes. Right, you're kind of taking something away from my parents, but uh -huh. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, why are the Japanese so uh, brilliant at coming up with new things? Why are they such great inventors? My theory is we have a better drink, better food, better environment, which makes smarter brain. And how do you go about uh, coming up with your ideas, Dr. Nakamas? I'm training every day, muscle training, spirit training. Really? Everything concentrate how to become smart. Smart is essential to create new invention. And you see, I like to sleep, and I like to watch TV, and I like to eat sweets. Mm -hmm. uh, are these good things for, for, for being inventive? Well, number one, uh, according to my research, if you sleep over six hours, that is very bad. You really? should be within six hours sleep. And second, secondary, don't look at TV, except this show. Um, now tell me, you've, you've got an enormous amount of patents, uh, more than Thomas Edison, That's right. who was the previous record holder. Yes. Um, are all these patents, I mean, how many is it? Um, uh, Thomas Edison, 1,093, and I am now 3,218, but this number will increase. OK, Dr. Nakamatsu, we're going to put your brilliance to the test now, and mm -hmm. we're going to go and see some of your inventions, yes. and we're going to see whether you can actually make Adam mm -hmm. uh, more intelligent That's right. uh, through your genius. So would you be willing to come and show yes, us around some of the cake? Well, if we can go over to... 
the specially appointed Dr. Nakamat's area, we will find Adam here. So, Dr. Nakamats, let's start with uh, your intelligence-enhancing chair, Cerebrex. Yes, it is human performance-enhancing robot. If, if I may uh, explain this, Adam drew this picture here before he sat in the chair, mm -hmm. uh, this self-portrait, and then this self-portrait below it was drawn after he'd been in the chair. Well, I'm going to come out at this stage. Why? Well, because I'm, I, I'm doing fine. Yeah, but I don't. I don't like my. Uh, you know, people casting aspersions now on my intelligence. Now your brains become excellent. Thanks. You have two brains: left brain and right brain. I tested that first. Your left brain. The result is wonderful. Result: 180 percent increase your that calculation power. Thanks very much, Doctor Nathan. So, so you're now just about parallel with with a tortoise or a budgie. Wonderful result. Yeah. Are you sure? Because I was, I thought the picture I did before the chair was a tiny bit better than the one I did afterwards. Okay, uh, the next invention we're going to look at, Dr. Nakamats, is these boots that Adam's wearing. So maybe, Dr. Nakamats, if you wouldn't mind joining me uh, okay. around here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes. How does it feel, Adam? Well, it's kind of like uh, wearing a pair of ski boots and jumping up and down in them. It's turning him into Michael Flatley, Dr. Nakamats. Is mm -hmm. that in intended? Yes, intended. So tell us, is this just an aerobic exercise or is this something to improve Adam's brain again? I think there are two purposes at least. One is to lose weight for yeah. diet. Yeah. And another purpose is to run faster than any other body. Does it, it doesn't help you run yes. faster, does it? Faster, you can run faster. Really? Yes. And so not only three, is it... Uh, at least three times faster, I think. He's gone. Yes, gone. Uh, he's very excited because it's made him a uh, normal height, mm -hmm. which is another terrific yes. achievement. Okay. Very fast. Okay. Um, if you'd just like to uh, stop running now, Adam. Yeah. Whoa! It's slightly <laughs> distracting. <laughs> Broken his ankle in a rather a premeditated prep fall, mm -hmm. I believe. You're a man who invented the floppy disk. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're a man who's that invented... That was uh, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. But you've when invented... When I was a student. Uh -huh. You've invented a lot of genuinely uh, really important yes. uh, technological things. Yes. And to some viewers, mm -hmm. some of your inventions might seem a little frivolous. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even a touch gimmicky. Is that kind of important when you're an inventor? Not to reject any ideas and to embrace silly things as well as serious things? Mm -hmm. I never invented the silly things. I already Not even the boots? My spirit of invention is love to everybody. Okay, Dr. Nakamats, um, yes. I'd like to now move on to uh, your next invention, the Love Jet. Yes. Um, this is a, a spray, and it's, according to the side of the packet, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Nakamats Love Jet is no need of foreplay, easy to penetrate, increased sex. That's right. Do I spray it on my neck, body, or on my genitalia? Here, your important portion. My important portion. Yes, which increase three times sex capabilities, and you can elongate your life. Um, and also you can improve your brain, and uh, women may improve skin, her skin. Um, because this is a new hormone. Are, are you already tested? We uh, haven't I haven't tested that. Used oh, it. You, no. should, you should test tonight. I don't like to use love sprays because it makes things dangerous. Dangerous? Yeah, I'm already fairly powerful in that okay. department. Dr. Nakamats, thanks very much for coming in today. It's been oh, fascinating to meet you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Now, here on Adam and Joe Go Tokyo, we're devoted to bringing you the latest and best Japanese pop culture, and that includes music. Each week, we'll be introducing you to a new Japanese band, and this week, it's Polysix. And we've stuffed a whole load of die-hard Polysix fans into the studio. It's sort of like SMTV Live. But Think... a lot better behaved. Well, exactly. Think of me as Cat Dealey and your Brian for the time being. Here are the three biggest Polysix fans right here. Now, Yui, uh, what is it about this band that you like so much? Right. Ayumi, what kind of a band are they? They're kind of a new wave outfit, or as I like to put it, Neo Tsunami. Stop it. Um, Finally, are there any British bands that you like? They love the Muse, you see. You can't get away from the power of Muse. 
Okay, that's almost it for tonight's show. Thanks very much for watching. Please join us again next week. But right now, to play us out with their new single, Kaja Kaja Goo, please welcome Polly Six. Uh, he looks like somebody who would have been very badly bullied at school, who's maybe seen a, a Jamiroquai video and liked it and, and copied it. Well, you were quite badly bullied at school. Is that the way you dance? Yeah. I'm not as good as that, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Weirdly, it says here they've been accused of being a second-rate Jamiroquai rip-off. I'd say they're a first-rate Jamiroquai rip-off. <laughs> Everybody knows that it's easy to get famous in Japan. This is because Japanese people are so enthusiastic that they'll embrace anybody, even the most washed up Western star. So that got me and Joe thinking, perhaps we could finally find the fame that so far eluded us somewhat in the UK. So we've given ourselves eight weeks to see. Hello, I'm Adam. And I'm Joe. And this is Adam and Joe Go Tokyo. We're coming to you from the most exciting, futuristic, and let's face it, confusing city on the planet, Tokyo. A city where you can walk into a totally normal shop and buy a t-shirt that says this. George Clapton. We'll be doing our best to prove to you that there's more to Japanese life than demented cartoons, talking toilets, and vending machines stuffed with schoolgirls' knickers, as wonderful as those things are. Coming up on tonight's show, we'll be checking out the Japanese fancy dress phenomenon of cosplay. There'll be live comedy and music here in the studio, and we'll be meeting a man who's been called one of the most famous inventors in the history of the entire world. But first, it's time for our roundup of the stories that have caught our eye here in Tokyo this week in our Go Tokyo update. Go Tokyo update. Go Tokyo update. Beep, 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 beep. Joe, what have you got for us? The first. Meiji, almond, and macadamia. Beckham T-shirts are tall. Well, you've uh, very effectively uh, adopted David Beckham's nut pose there, Adam. Thanks very much. Can you do his cheeky little smile once after he nibbles the nuts? No, you can't. No. Can no. So there we go, David Beckham's nuts. And they won't be uh, available for you to buy in Britain ever. OK, are you ready for some pop? Joe? Yes. 
Okay, now I know you're a Jamiroquai fan. Yeah, I don't really want to admit that on television. Well, but... it's too late for that now. Because if you do like Jamiroquai, you're going to love this guy. He's a Japanese pop sensation, and he's called Jam's Village. Jam's Village with a, with a Z in there. Let's have a look and check out Jam's Village's moves. <laughs> If we can become really big in Japan. As the first step in our quest for fame, we decided to test exactly how celebrity mad the Japanese public are. If Adam and I, a couple of nobodies, turned up in a public place, accompanied by a camera crew and ten screaming girls, would they assume we were famous and mob us? Let's see what happened. Hi and welcome to Celebrity Walkabout. I'm Meet Aiden, our fake showbiz reporter searching for celebs in central Tokyo. Adam and Joe. Well, tonight's his lucky night because we've just pulled up in our limo for an impromptu public schmooze. Aiden's excited, but will anyone else really care? Can we grab a few words with you guys? Is that okay? Okay. Hello, Aiden. How are you doing, mate? Well, one guy's trying to figure out who we are, so that's a start. Bring you to Tokyo. Oh, well, we love Tokyo, we love the Japanese, the fans are so enthusiastic. The Japanese are just physically less threatening than the fans in the UK, so that's nice. But despite our shades and our celebrity charisma, the crowds are so far failing to materialise. It's time to send in the screaming... story involves one of your favourite famous people in Britain, Adam. David Beckham. I love him. You love Posh and Bex? Yes. Well, if you thought you were going to escape from them uh, by being here in Tokyo, you can't. Because Beckham has endorsed no fewer than seven products in Japan. And his latest uh, campaign uh, revolves around chocolate-covered almonds. Since Beckham sponsored these nuts, they have sold double the amount. Really? He's a huge uh, star in Japan. We had to scour Tokyo to find these because they're so hard to come by. Why? Because they're all sold out? Yeah. Everybody wow. wants uh, a nibble on Beckham's nuts. Will you put one of David Beckham's nuts in my mouth? And they come in little individual nut, uh, nut bags. You were going to say nut sacks. I was going to say nut sacks, yeah. But then I pulled back. There we go. Have a go on that. And while Adam tries one of them, here's a slightly low quality VHS copy of his chocolate covered nuts. His nut bird. Open. 